The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Barbara Cade Manam, who is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Free Canada based in Swift Current. How's it going today? Good. <laughs> So you've done some interesting research surrounding fertilization that causes long-term simplification in the in the soil. Do you want to talk about some of the things you found? Well, this mostly started because I've been very fortunate to be able to study some long-term research plots here in Swift Current. They were initially set up in 1967 with uh, with a bunch of different rotations, but I've mostly focused on continuous wheat. Um, I'm actually interested in phosphorus, but so the acidification was kind of a side discovery from that. Um, but what they, what happened was they were set up with N and P or, or minus N plus P in 67. And then in 1995, they stopped adding phosphorus, which was more because of the interest of cadmium and phosphorus fertilizers. But of course, I, I, I'm a phosphorus chemist, so these are great plots to look at. And one thing we, start, we noticed that we published in... In 2015, we, we just looked at the plus n, plus p, and minus, the plus n, minus p, and noticed that the, that no phosphorus plots were still getting enough phosphorus that we weren't seeing any yield differences, even though they had stopped putting phosphorus on in 1995. So in 2016, we started trying to understand what was going on. And one thing we noticed was there was a really big difference in pH. That the, the no, no nitrogen, no phosphorus plots had the highest pH at about 6.5. And the ones that were getting both nitrogen and phosphorus, it's dropped down to 5.5. Um, and that, of course, causes lots of issues for phosphorus because phosphorus binds really tightly in the soil at low pH. There's also, we started looking at other things like cations, and we saw a big increase in exchangeable aluminum, which, of course, is a big concern um, for, for wheat because of aluminum toxicity. But we also saw a big drop in calcium. So we have actually expanded this to look at other crops. We just don't have a lot of results yet. We've also got expanded it to look at other, um, we've got some study sites in Manitoba and in, um, and in Quebec where soils were naturally outlined and we're seeing exactly the same thing, that there's acidification coming in from long-term use of nitrogen. And again, I should note that this isn't anything new. Research has shown that you should expect about a half a pH unit for every um, kilogram, 1,000 kilograms of nitrogen that, sh that we add as ammonia. So it's ammonia that's the issue, as is, it's nitrification, this is protons, and that's what causes sedimentation. And we're, that's exactly what we're saying. With these long-term plots, we can calculate exactly how much nitrogen we've been added, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So a farmer might be watching this and going, okay, that's great, but is there anything I could be doing about it? Is there... Is what there thing is, it, it happens at the surface soils. We see most of the change, and this is especially if you're going to zero till, it's going to sit right at the top, you know, three inches, so, you know, seven, half, ten centimeters maybe. So if you're collecting your soil samples and monitoring for pH and you're doing, the, you know, the whole plow layer, you're not going to see it because you're going to get it diluted down. So you get shallow sampling, and that's what you should be doing for fertilizer anyway, if, especially for zero till, because you need to monitor where you're putting it. But we actually see the, the pH change exactly where the fertilizer is added if we start looking at no till as well. So, yeah, you need to start monitoring pH. You need to have a sense of what it is, how it's changing, and perhaps think about liming your soils. And how can producers better monitor their pH? What, what's that process like? Well, again, if you're sending your soils out for soil, soil testing for nutrients, any commercial lab will do pH. So it's just a matter of sort of trying to, especially if you, if you haven't been doing it, maybe sample different plots that have had different fertilizers or were different, like a, or a, do you have lower areas in your soil, or a, places you know where there's differences in crop growth. Yeah. And obviously, like you said, this isn't anything that's new, but what sort of considerations are we keeping in mind long term now? You know, if 10 years from now, what can this be? Well, it's, it, it, 
it will not improve on its own. And so the more nitrogen you're adding or the higher rates of, of, that you're adding fertilizer, it, it's just going to continue. And this has been flagged as a really big issue in, in the um, Great Plains states like Idaho, Montana, uh, Nebraska. They've all got fertilizer. Uh, liming recommendations to go with our fertilizer recommendations right now and I think it's something we're going to have to start thinking about potentially here. What's interesting is this isn't new. I could find a paper published from this research station in 1995 saying yes it could potentially occur but it won't happen as long as we don't add more more than 40 pounds per acre of nitrogen fertilizer to our fields. Of course we're way beyond that. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add about your research? I'm just saying, I think there's, it, I, the work on the prairie has been interesting and as a, the phosphorus side is interesting as well. This was just a more, an unexpected side venture, but it, it, yeah, it's been great. Absolutely, and the different soil zones, has that been a big impact in your research? I mostly have worked here in Swift Current. I mean, acidification, up at Scott has been, there. in fact, they call those the acid soils, and that's something that's been known for a while. We've been doing this at this project. We've expanded to some other places where we know this is happening. I've also heard from producers in Alberta who told me that they've noticed actually this, but simply because they've suddenly needed to add one. I fosters fertilizer because the pHs are shifting. <laughs>